Today is D Hop Day. That's right, Pat. Yeah. Da Andre Hopkins. Ooh, he must be extra fancy. Mike, I think he's French. De Andre Hopkins, Andre D Hop himself is visiting your New England Patriots as we record. And here I am, your old pal Nick Fitzy Stevens alongside our new beat reporter for WEI and WEI.com, doing an excellent job this week at minicamp on the Six Rings Pod and more. It's Mr. At Mike Cadlick himself, who's filling in for Andy Hart, who is currently somewhere, probably with a handful of plantains and ice-cold beer on the beaches of Puerto Rico. Uh, a well somewhere. Good He's for him. It's got to be suns out, buns out for him someplace, you know, <laughs> validate all, all the hard work we're doing back ashore. But I wanted to get right to oh, it yeah. today. Pod. We're going to talk about DeAndre Hopkins and his official visit to at official Patriots. Uh, then we're going to get into Mike's too early roster projection for the New England Patriots. He put out earlier on WEEI.com, a 53 man projection, and we'll get his leftover mini camp thoughts as well. And then the final leg, of course, as always, your favorite segment and mine, Pat's Paris, the leftover news, notes, nuggets, and rumblings from around the wide world of Pat's nation. All right, Mike, let's get to it. So everyone's confirmed it under the sun. DeAndre Hopkins arrived last night. Um, yep. I think there was something about a breakfast this morning on the South shore or something like that. Ooh. Not sure exactly if there was quite the, I know, listen, they're, they're going all out fancy. Extra, extra fancy. If, if uh, I'm not sure if, if his ride, uh, if his rig was as fancy as the one like that, that service van that picked up Hopkins in Nashville, yeah. back, uh, official bachelorette party capital of the world. Personally, if I was Vrabel, I would have showed up at the airport on one of those bachelorette party pedal taverns, and I would have just <laughs> <Yeah>. had <laughs> make me Harold Landry, like Ryan Tannehill, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we just would have ridden back and gotten a workout in and knocked a few cold ones back on the way. He would have probably had so much fun. He would have been like, "Oh, eff it, man, I'm not even going to New England." But okay, yeah, right. missed opportunity for the Titans. He comes to New England. Uh, I would have made sure like that van, that car service that picks him up, there would have been like, I mean, I'm talking, I would have had Mike's pastry, Dom's steak tips, oh, yeah. uh, some good coffee, maybe like some canes or blackbird donuts in there. I would have just filled it with every aroma, every delight you possibly could that makes living in and around Boston and the entirety of New England, Pat's nation, if you Pat's nation proper, so good. Brought him to the stadium and then let what about Bill. A Sam Adams or two? Are they allowed to? Oh, see, everyone to can seat? have those. That's the thing. Like, you yeah, got to drink fair. like hyper local. Like, that's too cliche. Like, you're not going to okay. have a Dunks in there because you can drink Dunks in Tokyo. Fair point. Yeah, you can have a Sam Adams so like anywhere. a local brewery, like like a treehouse thing or something. A treehouse, yeah, a vitamin C, exactly. Yeah, a Widowmaker, yeah, okay. Lord Hobo, the good stuff. Um, there we go. You know, and De DeAndre would have probably been like, that's okay. It's too early for me. <laughs> I'd be in the van. I'd be like, never too early for me, brother. You treat your body like a temple. I treat mine like a landfill. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> so what do you think? So how, so let's let's imagine how the meeting, which is currently going on still, yep. or so we believe, uh, mini camps, final day was canceled on Wednesday, team bonding trip, paintball outing for the Patriots. What do we think? Uh, what do we think the pitch was for Hopkins? And tell me why you think the Patriots need him as badly as I think they do, as Andy Hart thinks they do, and most Pats fans and media believe they do. Well, shocking to hear that uh, one Andy Hart actually thinks that the Patriots should go get a guy and improve the team. Um, you know, right? the, the Debbie Downer that he can be sometimes. Dealt with that all too well this week at Gillette Stadium. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Me and, me and Andy did had fun on the, on the show this week. But no, I think uh, the pitch to Hopkins should be that you're going to be the guy here. You're going to be the number one wide receiver in this offense. You can get back to where you were. You're going to get a large share of the targets. We're going to run the offense through you. Bill O'Brien could tell him we're going to run it through you just like we did three or four years ago in Houston. Uh, the report is from Diana Rossini that uh, there is no animosity between the two. Mm -hmm. So they're on the same page, likely. Um, and yeah, they're, they're going to run the offense through him. And he's going to be the number one guy. The other thing that they can offer uh, is money. That's what it's going to That's got to be the pitch for Hopkins, too. He wants to get paid and he wants to be the guy again. Um, so that's sort of, I'm sure what they're going through now today. Um, I'm sure Billy O'Brien's in the meeting just as much as Belichick is. I'm sure they're going over, you know, how the offense has changed since they've been together, uh, what they can do with him. And, uh, 
again, just, you know, what they can, what they can pay him realistically for a salary, whether it be one years, two years, or um, that sort of logistical stuff that they'll have to get done. But I think, uh, again, I think the main thing for Hopkins is going to be being the guy and being, uh, getting him some money. And I think the Patriots can, you know, offer both of those things. Yeah. Money may do the talking first and foremost. Yeah. And let's say they decide to offer him, even though the report, uh, you know, Willie wet blanket, the rap sheet, the guy who first reports on it, then comes out and says, like, it makes sense for him to sign with the Patriots, but don't expect a right. deal before training camp because maybe D hops agent. I bet you his management will try to get in his ear and say, hold on. What if somebody, you know, we got a meniscus or an ACL or an Achilles right. on a wide receiver on a team that's looking to compete. And they want an instant number one or number one a wide receiver substitute. That's where we can go in there, command, ask, demand, top dollar. I understand that. That's the nature of capitalism and trying to do good business. But at the same time, you may not get an offer, like you were saying, from the Patriots, where not only are you going to get next to premium dollar, let's say it's three years, $50 million, but they guarantee like, 24 up front, 20 up front at least. So like, even if he only plays one year and they cut him, he still gets paid. He still gets a bag, right? To me, the, uh, the thing is Deandre Hopkins go to Buffalo. Okay. Maybe you got a chance to like, there's still the prohibitive betting favorites. We'll get into Buffalo and why I think there's trouble up in uh table jumping hot sauce paradise a little bit later (laughs) in the pod. But like, let's say, let's say he goes up to Buffalo. He is now the third biggest player on that team. Behind Josh Allen, your Madden cover boy, and Steph Diggs, who is demanding, obviously, a hell of a lot more spotlight than even he's gotten the past three seasons. You go to Kansas City, there is no bigger star in the NFL right now than Patrick Mahomes. And I don't know how much ego and vanity will play into it. I have to imagine some, if you're a diva number one wide receiver who's been a three-time all-pro and five-time pro bowler. But if you can say... This guy understands you because Billy O'Brien knew what to do with you. And he's only gotten better at calling plays since. Mac Jones is more accurate than you think. Okay, we're going to stop trying to sell that point. You love Bill Belichick. We're going to pay you. And you are the biggest star on this team. We will move D-Hop jerseys. They'll be chanting D-Hop, D-Hop. Like, it's going to be crazy for him. I think that should almost be at the top of the selling point list. Yeah, this is going to become his city. Right. I mean, he is like you said, he'll be the number one guy. Him and Matthew Judon will be the two the stars of the city. Again, you could put Mac Jones up there uh, again because he's the quarterback. But realistically, it's going to be the Hopkins show on offense. Um, So, I mean, that's a huge pitch to him, I I would say. Uh, Yeah. And and just the idea of running things like in addition to the fact that they're going to put him front and center on billboards. There's going to be welcome to New England Hopkins. He's going to be getting offers for free dinners, free drinks, free this, free that. Like, tr- like real star treatment. Right. Um, you know, it, in addition to all of that, like running the offense through him, uh, Hart and I were talking about this uh, a couple days ago on the, the early morning breaking Boston podcast about, about how amazing Nikola, you know, crossing sports momentarily, if you'll allow sure. how great Nikola Jokic was obviously finals MVP for Denver, but they ran the offense through him the same way the Celtics need to run everything through Jason Tatum. Whether he's actually the play or not, rebounds, assists, good passing, big shots. They need like they can quickly change whatever's been made available and run things through Hopkins so that whether it's out of the backfield, short passes, uh, they can use him creatively in a more Edelman type role. He can get downfield. If he needs to freelance a little bit, go ahead. But he immediately takes the number one corner on every team. So when you play depending on who's number one on Miami, whether you think it's going to be Xavier Howard or Jalen Ramsey, Jaylen Ramsey, one of them has right. to be perpetually occupied with Hopkins. Sauce Gardner, okay, let's say he doesn't have big games against the Jets. That does allow other guys like Juju or Bourne to feed a little bit more because they don't have to worry about getting sauced on that day. Like Tredavious nice. White, he's going to have to worry about DeAndre Hopkins. Like that's That's high leverage value on an offense that needs to break through this season, Mike. I, I think that's why the fit makes so much sense with New England because, again, A, they can run it through him. They, they He did it before with O'Brien as the play caller. And then, like you said, it's just going to open up everything else, else in this offense if he's the one that can dictate the coverage. And then you open up guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, Kendrick Bourne, both tight ends, Mike Kosicki, who has had an awesome uh, offseason mm-hmm. program so far. Uh, yes, Henry, yes. Henry already has – what's that? 
Yeah, he looks yes, great. Yes. I mean, the, everyone was freaking yeah. out earlier today for, on the the yeah. Mac to Gasicki pass that I read about on your wei.com coverage from minicamp as well. Nice pass. Not exactly sure why at Patriots needed to tweet out haters will say it's fake. All right, well, all right. It's it was it's the, not the it New England the versus Taekwon everyone thing, days. Though. Yeah, that's true. Come on. But the Taekwon <laughs> Thornton pass from a few weeks ago, everyone was like, "Oh, this is doctored because it looked like it looks like the ball goes one way and then it's another catch, and they think they spliced yeah. it together or something." But no, Come on. Uh, two great throws and catches from uh, yeah. one Mac Jones. But uh, back to Hopkins. No, they'll, they'll they'll run the system through him. He'll open up other guys underneath. And uh, ultimately, even if you know Hopkins, like you said, isn't the guy one day if he gets shut down by a Sauce Gardner. But Juju goes for you know seven catches for 100 yards and a touchdown, and they win. Hopkins wants to win too. And that's what we're looking for here. That gets you more money. That gets you paid. That makes everybody happy if you win football games. So uh, I think the I think the fit is uh, perfect as a stretch, but I think it's it's a really solid fit, and they should make the move. And Robert Kraft has talked. He wants to go back to the playoffs. He wants mm-hmm. the team to start winning again. Now DeAndre Hopkins can help you do all of that, but also the thing that Robert Kraft is not going to come out and say is. I also want to be relevant. I want more headlines. I want more clicks. I want buzz. I want people talking about us again. And if people are looking at the Patriots as a clear fourth best talent wise team in the AFC East, and yet, yes, I know we have yet to see this defense that people are already talking about as a potential all time, or at least a top five to top seven unit in the NFL in terms of uh, point prevention, you know, Mm -hmm. DeAndre Hopkins gets you headlines and buzz. Good morning. Football. We'll talk about it. NFL right. network, all the other shows, the click divation through every Patriots blog, our radio station and beyond will be absolutely massive. So he he'll pay for it at the pro shop. He'll pay for it with uh, engagement. He'll pay for it on the field as well. Like I don't let him leave without the deal. Like don't that's uh, this deal is yeah. not going to be available in late July. If you go like, Sign on the line that is dotted now. Let's get this done. Let's give Billy O six weeks to like tear a few pages out, maybe grab a few wrinkles from Houston and Alabama he can put back in. I'll give you one example, Mike. The play when Hop when um when the Texans beat the Patriots on Sunday night football in Tom Brady's final season. There was a play. DeAndre Hopkins went what was split wide, came rolling right. Um, and uh what's his face? The creep at quarterback. Um, Watson. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. Watson, um, Deshaun Watson did a sort of like a flick pass, very Mahomes like, if you will, to Hopkins, who ran like and had a nice convoy. Like, I had never really seen DeAndre Hopkins yeah. run the ball before, and he and he got a touchdown out of it. And I thought, oh man, that is so clever. Man, I love I love play calling like that. Use him like that again, whatever. Let him know right. that like he's still he's not gonna just be a decoy, uh, or part of the fold. Like, I hope they get it. I hope they get it done. Can you think of any reason why the New England Patriots wouldn't be into him? Do you buy the whole idea that like there's no market? He could be washed. This could be Julio Jones 2.0 all over again. That the Julio conversation scares me a bit because again, when he was up for grabs and Tennessee got him, I thought the Patriots should have been in on him at that time. And obviously that didn't work out and he kind of, you know, fizzled out and ended his career. Not so great, but, um, I want to go back quickly to the, to the craft thing before I mm-hmm. before I give the anti pitch because okay. look if Kraft wants to stay relevant and wants Hopkins he can make it work and I don't know where you stand as far as you know the puppet master owner and if you want to you know get tied into that kind of stuff and like look he was clearly involved in the Gerard Mayo the Gerard Mayo thing the press release the mm-hmm. this is the offensive coordinator he started to you know get involved in football operations where he mm-hmm. didn't in the past. If he wants to continue that and wants to bring in a guy like Hopkins, you mentioned the, you know, three year, 50 million with 24 million guaranteed. Once you talk guarantees, that's when it's owner time. And that's where the owner has to pony up and say, we can give you this money now. So if Kraft wants to spend the money on Hopkins, he can get in that room and say, let's go do this. So that's, that's another thing where he can kind of determine the fate of this team if he wants to stay relevant again. So we'll see what happens with the pitch. Uh, do you have any thughts on that before we go to that? Oh, absolutely. Like it's it. been such yeah. a high, he has been such a high engagement, high involvement off season for him from right. the season ticket member email. Like we're going to do better. We're going to get right to work on this and improve and return exactly. to Patriots football, Patriots way and winning. Then of course the Gerard Mayo and the offensive coordinator, they get Billy O'Brien back. They have Adrian Clem, good draft free agency. It's been pretty solid. I, if, if he's been this involved, why stop now? You either commit, exactly. you go whole hog or you don't do it at all. So yeah, I think, right. I think he should go all the way. And now 
real quick before we wrap up leg one here on the pod, what's the sure. anti pitch for Hopkins? Um, I don't know if it's is he washed. I look a bit more look at it more as how does he how does he work with this team long term because. You have a quarterback in Mac Jones who is in his third season and who you do want to continue to develop, to develop and, uh, you know, have a guy who he can develop with, like Brady had with, you know, so many guys, but mainly you mm -hmm. look at Gronk and Edelman, guys who were there for a long time um, and develop that rapport over the course of multiple years. Mac has not really had that security blanket yet. He had it in Jacoby Myers and they let him walk. And he's kind of had it with Ramondre Stevenson, but he's a running back. So he doesn't mm -hmm. really have that built up, you know, go to rapport with one guy. And if you bring in Hopkins and you run the offense through him for one season, that's great. But what happens next year in Hopkins year 32 season, right? It's kind of like feels like a one and done. Uh, we're going to bring him in for one season and see if we can sort of go all out here. But he doesn't have that much longer left in his career. So if they're mm -hmm. looking to plan for the future, I don't know how much Hopkins really helps that. That being said, I don't know how much. Uh, how much room Belichick really has to look past this season. Like you got to win now. You don't really have the, uh, the flexibility to look further mm -hmm. on. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Again, if they go, if they go six and 11, five, seven and 10 this season, I don't know if, you know, they could blow this thing up for all we know, but it could be, they're not going to fire Bill Belichick, but there could be the whole mutual parting of ways type thing that you've heard. So I don't know how much, uh, how much room they have to look past the season. But if that's the way they, the, if that's the lens they look through, Hopkins might not be your guy that you want to bring in here because he's not going to be here long term. No, he's not going to be here long term because who knows how much longer he's going to be in the league. And exactly. it doesn't seem like he's gold chasing or ring chasing as much as he's comfort chasing and check, ch check chasing. So uh, no one's going to tell you that the duck boats are all fired up and the Patriots are going to be hanging their seventh banner come middle of February 2024. But at right. the same time, they're going to be competitive. It'll still be high leverage football. There will be national football games. Uh, I, I think everything lines up for Hopkins to come here if he yeah. wants to get that balance of getting paid, being a star, and actually being in competitive football games. I'm into it. What do you say, Pats fans? Holler at us if you get a chance at Fitzy GFY, at Mike Cadlick, and of course, at Six Rings Pod. Give us a follow, rate, review, subscribe, and share when you get a chance. Let us know. Seems like most of you are in favor of the Patriots going all out, tossing a bag, and reeling in DeAndre Hopkins. But if you feel otherwise, let us know. And now on with the show. All right, leg number two here on the podcast. Mike, earlier today, you put out a, on Thursday, you published a way too soon, all too early, destined, yes. to, fa destined to fail and be... <laughs> quote tweeted early 53-man yep. projection for your New England Patriots coming off your observations at OTAs and minicamp. So without going through the entirety of the 53, let's actually just uh, get to some of the highlights. Tell us a couple sure. of the most difficult decisions that you had to make. Yes, Patriots post minicamp roster projection offseason program paints a clearer picture. So walk us through uh, some of the highlights, uh, tough cuts and hard choices you made. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, bouncing off the uh, the segment we just did beforehand in the wide receiver room, I did put DeAndre Hopkins in the room, even though he's not yet rostered. Um, I wow. I am of the mindset that he's going to sign, so I have Hopkins as one of the six wide receivers they keep. That's I'm going to go full Paris Hilton. That's hot. <laughs> you like that? I like so, that. Like, yeah, so again, and again, I keep six wide receivers, which is a lot, um, but and I, I've sort of thought about where they go in the room should they sign Hopkins and if Kendrick Bourne's the odd man out, if Devontae Parker's the odd man out. But Juju Smith-Schuster, Tyquan Thornton are two guys who were not participating at the end of the offseason program at all on the field because they were both nursing injuries. So I don't know how much you know room you have to mess with bringing in Hopkins and then letting another healthy guy go because if you bring in Hopkins, who's 31, and then Juju goes down or Tyquan Thornton goes down again, then... You're working with Demario Douglas and signing mm -hmm. somebody else. Like it, the room gets, you know, I don't want to say bad, but the room gets thin fast. So if you can keep six guys who I have as Hopkins, Juju, Kendrick Bourne, Devontae Parker, Tyquan Thornton, and rookie slot receiver Demario Douglas as the six wide receivers, then I think you give yourself uh, some insurance should one of them go down. Uh, the so one I know Andy, I, yeah, uh, the tough guy's got to be booty because. Yeah. Um, 
I was hype on the fact that they may have found a diamond in the rough. All those like he could be the next Steph, next Steph Diggs projections or whatever. I know. Yeah. Uh, hearts out on all that, but I wonder if they if they do release him. If like let's say he goes through camp, he doesn't distinguish himself too much. He's not an absolute stud, but he's good. There are some flashes. I feel like the buzz that surrounded his selection by New England in the few weeks thereafter would be enough that some team would poach him, and I don't think he would make it to the practice squad. Yeah, I agree. I think if if uh, if he does end up getting cut, I, I have a hard time thinking he gets through waivers. So uh, another yeah. team could pick him up, give him a chance. So, uh, yeah. but no, I think you know when I did my even earlier, uh, way too early roster projection after the draft, I did have Booty on the roster. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think he was there in Hop. I I had six, I believe, and I switched him in Hopkins essentially. But um, that I being think said, most people would be comfortable with you putting in Hopkins and dealing with the the loss of exactly. Booty. That would. Yeah, he hasn't but, done anything to distinguish himself yet, and all we keep hearing is how quick, and you saw it firsthand, how quick Demario Douglas looks. Yeah, Booty was hurt, but he wasn't on the field the last few practices, so I don't know if he's still dealing with an injury from college or, you know, what oh, that is. Yeah, but I think he, uh-oh, the Foxborough flu is coming, Mike. Here it yeah. comes. Kayshawn Booty, they see something. Up, oh, oh, it's going to, oh, your arm is broken, kid. Exactly. My arm, it's broken. That's it. It's coming. That's not, I mean, I'm fine with it. Put him on IR and keep him on the roster and, you know, sit him up for the season and keep mm -hmm. him around. If that's the way they can do it, I'm all for it. But we haven't seen enough from him yet uh, to have him on the 53, that's for sure. All right. Uh, let's see. We're rolling on there. You only keep two quarterbacks, getting rid of Trace McSorley. Uh, yep. That's not a tough decision. Uh, running backs, you got four. Stevenson, Montgomery, Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris with the dismissal or release rather of James Robinson this week, who obviously is just banged up too banged up to play professional yeah, football. Tough. That room. I would have yeah. liked Robinson. I would, would have liked Robinson in the room and probably would have had Kevin Harris off because I, you know, Robinson, Harris, Pierre strong. They haven't really shown us a ton uh, over the last couple of days that we were there. Uh, but I just think the, the upside of James Robinson would have kept him on and kept have Kevin Harris off. Mm -hmm. But again, can't stay healthy. So you give the six round pick from last season a chance. I like it. I like it a lot. It's too bad about James Robinson. Andy's hype train for him has derailed, yeah, crashed into a <laughs> crashed into a chasm and is currently on fire. It's a damn shame for one yeah. and all. Um, but hey, obviously he's not healthy enough to play football. If and when he can, I'm not sure if he would be willing to come back to New England if there'd be mutual interest. Went over right. the wide receivers, only two tight ends. So no, you don't think that they hold on to let's say a uh uh, a Sokol or especially Ferkser as a blocking tight end, especially given the how much running they'll do and uh, the questions on the offensive line. Yeah, so um, in this in this article that we are speaking of here, I do have you know the book. I do have the bubble at the end. Sorry, I just dropped my uh, my plug, but <laughs> I do have the bubble at the end. Last three on, last three off. Uh, Anthony Ferkser was one of the last three off. Um, again, I think that's going to be a tough decision. Uh, I believe that they're going to want to keep some sort of, you know, blocking element in the room. But I just don't know if he's going to, you know, show us enough to kind of be there. Um, If they're going to yeah. keep a blocker, I may think that it would actually be a guy like Johnny Lumpkin, who they uh, was an undrafted guy who uh, is probably a better, again, uh, he's a rookie, so it'd be tough, but could give you more as a blocker than Ferkser. But Ferkser obviously is going to be the pass catcher. And I think they have yeah. plenty of pass catchers in Gasicki and Henry. So yeah, and, and uh, Lumpkin they go two is a tight ends just like last season. Uh, okay. And then maybe as far as, you know, I have them keeping 10 offensive linemen, uh, Ooh, because they were so 10. thin. Wow. They were so thin there last year. And it mm -hmm. again, clearly fizzled out, uh, on them at the end of the season. So you keep an extra guy in there. Maybe you throw in, uh, you know, two tackles on the line. If you want to, you know, you know, really mm -hmm. block it up, uh, two tackles on one side, should I say? So, yeah. Uh, let's see. You have, uh, James Ferentz, who was re-signed in the offseason, a veteran friend of Bill, his dad, Kirk Ferentz at Iowa. He gets removed, even though he's best buddies with Riley Reef, who helped convince him to come yeah. here. Second-year player, Chasen Hines. Bill Murray, who's tried to catch on on the D-line and the O-line. Neither has worked. Cody Russey and someone we really haven't seen much from yet, who they had high hopes for, considering he was a second-team All-American his senior year. Andrew Stuba, the tackle out of Michigan, who I don't know if he just can't, you know, make the club because he's spending too much time in the tub or what he'll see. He's one of those guys who's going to get like yeah. two or three looks this summer to prove it. Otherwise it'll likely be fairly well. Can I just offer up one if crazy thought? I feel like if they Let's see enough, I, th I think you and I both believe most folks don't believe that 
Mike on when is going to resign with the club rather that they will not right. extend him a contract offer because they drafted uh, both uh, city. So and Antonio Mafi to be the new big plugs in the middle of the line with right. uh city. So possibly having tackle flexibility from his first year at Eastern Michigan. Let's say these guys look the part of pros and they look as good as on when you did his rookie season. I wouldn't be surprised if on when you got traded. I don't hate that idea. Um, again, that's why I have those three guys uh, on the roster, the three interior guys they drafted in Andrew, Sal, and uh, Mafi, because they're going to want to keep them around. There clearly is a contingency mm -hmm. plan there should Owenu leave, mm -hmm. leave next year. Mm -hmm. If they impress, if they can get them out there and they can get something for Mike Onwenu, then yeah, you're right. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they did something like that. I should say, though, we'll note that um, Antonio Mafi was in a non contact uh, red jersey out at uh practice this week. So uh, I don't know if that's another Foxborough flu. I don't know if that's another straight mm. cut situation, fifth round pick. So it'd be tough to cut him. Right. But, uh, if he's not there, if he's not healthy, then I, I find it hard to believe they cut uh, or they trade Mike on when if, if he's not around. Yeah. And well, don't Mike on when you don't forget was a six round pick as well. Um, right. So I, I, you know, I, I, I just get that weird feeling like someone's going to have to be moved. And I know earlier in, in an early, 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 way, way, way too early 53, man, you had Trent Brown getting released, but he's too big and they need him too much. And we'll get into yeah. Trent Brown a little bit later in the pod. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you got six guys on the D line. Fare thee well, Carl Davis, uh, Justice Tavai, et cetera. So long as they're able to give Lawrence Guy a little money by the time proper training camp starts, we should get him back in the fold for his final Foxborough football season on the linebacker yeah. side, Judon Uche Bentley, Anthony Jennings, who I think still has some good football to offer Jelani to Chris board, who is a both linebacker and special team are extraordinaire Keon yep. white, who hopefully is spending as much time around Jabril peppers and Matt Judon as possible. So he can choose violence 24 seven and yep. everyone's crush Marte Mapu. I had a hard time uh, figuring out what room to put Mapu in, whether I was going to call him a linebacker or a safety. He's going to play everywhere on the defense. They did it uh, when we were there down there the last couple of weeks. He is uh, fully, I guess, fully committed to playing both linebacker and safety. He sounds ready to do whatever they ask him to, to do, and I believe that's exactly what they're going to do because, again, Matthew Judon said it best that he moves like a free safety but stands like a linebacker. The dude's massive, and he's also, like, lightning quick, so – they're gonna they're gonna use him everywhere and he's gonna be awesome. He's clearly gonna make the team. Um, the one interesting one that I had off the roster was Mac Wilson. I but it's not that crazy. Like again, hey. it's Mac Wilson. Sorry, like hey. and who I like and who he's been on the uh he's sure. been on the Matthew er, on the DeAndre Hopkins recruiting train with uh with Matthew Judon, but no, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think they keep eight linebackers. I think Jennings, like you said, has a lot of good football left in him. He made the team last year. He was fine. Um, if he can show a little bit of improvement, he'll end up as a lock, but he could be a bubble guy. Um, but no, I think the linebacker room is pretty chalk. I only thought about Mapu as a safety and then Chris Board as a special teamer. But again, it, it's interchangeable. Uh, you have in the cornerbacks room, Gonzo, John Jones, Marcus Jones, Jack Jones, and Miles Bryant. I have no quibble uh, or, yeah, or quad. That's, that's easy. That was an easy yeah. decision. Sean Same Wade, safety, Bolden, so. Mosley, Hawkins, Rodney. Adios. See ya. Yeah. Uh, safeties, Duggar, Phillips, Mills, and Peppers. Josh Bledsoe, Joshua Bledsoe, Mr. Joshua. Been working hard to try to get out there. Health has been a concern. I like his versatility. I think the kid can be a good football player. Yeah, um, I agree. Third year, third year guy. I know the Pats have been high on him for a while, but if it hasn't panned out at this point, Peppers is healthy. And you have, like you mentioned, the flexibility with Mapu to pull him from linebacker to play him at safety or all over the place. Notice I didn't say positionless football. Therefore, you don't have to do a shot, everybody. Um, that may make him expendable. And finally, specialists. Oh, 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 my heart. Oh, it hurts so much. Cody Davis. You got Schooler, Matthew Slater. No, Cody Davis. He may have to go. That's fine because you got young guys in the form. Okay. Uh, you got, uh, you're holding on to like, like you held, uh, do we hold on to wait? Well, oh my gosh, we're not even holding no no Isaiah Bolden and also nope. no Amir Speed. Ooh, and Haley. Guy. Wow. Sorry. You got Rylan the kicker. That kills me because there goes the legend of big kick Nick. Bryce yeah. Barringer wins the punting job. Cardona, Slater, Schooler. It's gonna be tough. Slater sticking around may cost you one of these guys like Speed yeah. or Bolden, 
who one day with their ridiculous speed, like I wouldn't be surprised if one of them gets a Foxborough flu or like a random injury in the middle of July yeah. or like on August 2nd. And it's like, oh no, he can't play anymore because they know like this is Slate's last season. But uh, I've heard Ryland has a big leg, big kick may yep. be gone. And you put Malik Cunningham here. He is one of the most fascinating projects and prospects in Foxborough right now. Yeah. Um, again, I called him a specialist. Um, I didn't really want to call him a quarterback. I didn't really want to call him wide receiver. He's clearly repping with the receivers, but he's listed as a quarterback on the roster. And uh, they've sort of done a little experimenting uh, on both of that. So call mm -hmm. him a specialist and, you know, get him on the roster, get him on the 53, because that's a guy who might not clear waivers and can't be a practice squad guy. So you keep him on the 53, you use him where you want to use him, And with this new, and I got to credit Alex Barth, uh, who was my former podcast host, who sort of gave this idea of having keeping Cunningham on the roster. You can have him as your backup with this new, a weird third quarterback emergency rule, emergency quarterback rule. Do you make him the backup? You put Zappy yes. as the third, and that way Malik yeah. Cunningham can play wide receiver, gunner, uh, whatever you want. Take Pat, like running back, whatever, because we've yep. seen the footage at Louisville. Like this dude, this dude can scoot when he's got the ball exactly. in his hands in the open field. Watch out. Like he, yeah. Marcus Jones, wowed and electrified people last season. Cunningham may just do the same. That's a, and I love Alex. I celebrate the entire Barthian catalog. Um, <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, you keep, you keep Cunningham. Idea. Yeah. You keep Cunningham, make him the backup for the game. You can use him everywhere. Um, should God forbid Mac Jones get hurt. You can't go to Zappy yet because he's your emergency guy. You need to put Cunningham in for the rest of the game. But the next yeah. time, the okay. next game, Zappy's your backup quarterback, and then he can just you know come off the come or off Zappy the starts the next game. That's fine. You just exactly. switch him that yeah. week. Yeah, you just change the right. designation. But you yeah, do so it. Zappy's all your season. backup, but yeah, I absolutely. That's a fun like idea. That is getting creative. That is back to Belichick tweaking the rules or finding the gray yeah, exactly. spaces where he can hide out and do his things. I like it, Mike. Good work. If you guys want to read it, it's available at WEI.com. Patriots post minicamp roster projection offseason program paints a clearer picture. Solid roster. We'll see how that goes. Definitely a couple of possible injury designations, or as I said, Foxborough flus coming up. We'll know more about that once training camp gets underway in late July. And then by the time we get to late August, after they've played their three pretend season games, with the only one being Thursday, August 10th against the Texans at Gillette, we'll know much more about the roster. All right. Moving on to the final leg of the podcast. Uh, Mike, let's do a little Pat's Parade. This is the rest of everything else we wanted to talk about that we just uh, reach into the old Patriots junk drawer sure. and see what else is going on. Uh, so Dante Scarnecchia was on the Greg Hill show Thursday. And he has been a frequent caller, a uh, frequent guest of the Six Rings podcast and a WEI. What did he say about Trent Brown that raised eyebrows? Like, well, I, I, we all know how much Trent Brown loved him. And Trent Brown yep. was late. There was a canceled flight. People wonder if he still wants a new deal, wants more money. Probably not going to happen. But if he wants that one more big ass contract in the NFL, then he's going to have to get his big ass out there and start playing like the potential all pro that he was in 2018. And the guy who flashed at times last year and then at times seemed kind of disinterested. Yeah. Um, so Scar went on, obviously, Greg Hill. Um, another another shameless plug wrote about this one on the old weei.com. So you can go mm -hmm. check out the uh the full the full blog. But um, yeah, he was on and a guy who, like you mentioned, is uh was sort of credited for being able to reel Trent Brown in during his his first stint uh with the Patriots before getting the bag from from John Gruden and the, and the old, the old Raiders. Um, but no, Scar went on Greg Hill this morning, basically talked about the veteran and said, look, uh, it was, the biggest thing was getting him to conform to the culture, the standards uh, that the players held in the room. And once Trent re realized that it was either time to fall in line or fall on his sword, he found it easier to fall in line with everybody else. Um, he kind of went on to say that it also had to do with the players in the room and that David Andrews is a leader, a guy who mm -hmm. can do this um, and, you know, help him along. He mentioned that uh, Adrian Clem should also be a guy who can, can help Trent along, but you know they haven't really done that yet, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like Trent wasn't there, he wasn't around. He had the he missed the flight, which again, I, not that I don't believe it, but figure it out, get there. Don't fly commercial. I don't know. You're you're right. filthy rich. You just got paid by the Vegas Raiders. Like, come on. So, and by the way, what airline does he fit in? 
Yeah, good point. That's a very good point. That's at least two seats, even in first class. Like Trent Brown, I've seen him. My my yes. line has always been like Trent Brown blocks two things: people in the sun. He's a yeah. massive specimen. I don't know what the hell yeah. airline he plot. Scar Scar does love him though, and I, this is sort of how I rounded out the whole thing with the, with the quote. And he said he likes him, tremendous talent. Would love to see him there, able to do what he can do to help the team. Um, but they got to get him on board, and uh, it would really help them. So I think he thinks that. They- they can get him on board that they just haven't done it yet. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sort of in that boat. I think once you get him focused and, you know, ready to compete and ready to win, he's great, but he just needs to be all there, you know, mentally. And Scar's really been the only guy so far that I've seen being able to do it. So it'll be a fascinating situation with what happens with Trent Brown come training camp. Yeah, it would be for sure. Uh, have you had a chance to catch any of the clips th- thus far on social or at the 30, the 33rd team.com from Bill Belichick's chat with his pal, Mike Tannenbaum. I wrote this up the other day for WA.com. Mm-hmm. The whole idea that Belichick, he loves curating the reputation, the aura of mystique, the curmudgeon being grumpy, giving people nothing. And, and that's what people always think about him. Oh, he's so crusty. Oh, he's such a dick. Oh, you know, he gets sort of gets off on this. And sometimes he does. But uh, at the same time, whenever he speaks to someone he respects, has worked with, uh, likes, you know, or as a fob, as we say, friend of Belichick, then you end up getting that the gregarious out, you know, forthcoming, uh, sometimes even, you know, the wealth of knowledge and, you know, damn near affable Belichick. And that's who we get on these clips because he was talking with Mike Tannenbaum. And if you go to the, if you either follow at the 33rd team or go to the 33rd team.com, you can see these clips talking about how he believes the game has evolved. There's going to be a whole more, whole bunch more that they're going to uh, unveil as the summer progresses. But I love the clip about talking about the three goats that he coached. Yeah, uh, that's I, the I one not piece that, that I saw of it. Yeah, yeah Lawrence Taylor, duh. Yep. Uh, Tom Brady, duh. And then he threw Matthew Slater in there as well. Yep. I was great. Like, great. The fact that he gives, I mean, obviously he brought Slater back to the team, convinced him not to retire. Uh I thought that I thought that was great, but if anyone's looking for a little extra Pat's porn or some Pat's content yeah, to help fill, yeah, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, speaking of television, football, football entertainment, Hard Knocks is trying to settle on a team for their latest season on HBO and, of course, streaming on Max, as they have now foolishly yes. rebranded it. The rebrand uh, is so odd. It's oh, so it's so stupid. strange. It's so freaking strange. I don't get it at yeah. all. Uh, but. So there's four teams that are eligible to do it. It's like the Saints, the Jets, the Commanders, um, yep. and there's one other team. All four teams have said, no, we don't want to do it, even though the NFL can demand that they do it. So before the NFL had to force one of the teams to do it, they've gone back to the Detroit Lions to say, your, your hard knocks last year was so good. Your hard knocks last year had such great ratings. You were so compelling. We want you to do it again. And... uh you know, I, I can't imagine the Lions are going to put Goff through it again. That no. they, you know, Dan Campbell may say yes. I I don't know if it was a distraction or if it was a an inspiration to them last year. But I just force the friggin' Jets to do it. Just give us what we want. I want Rodgers. I want Zach. Wil- hard knocks. Dude, Zach Wilson, Sauce Gardner. Can, is this finally the year for the Jets? Can what yeah. is Aaron like? It, they're just so much weird and compelling. Uh, and, and interesting, like this is a, like, you've got a topic, like it might be the most interesting the Jets have been since that one back in 2009, the let's go get a goddamn snack. Let's go get a goddamn snack. Yeah, yes, yeah, man. Snack. Like, yep. let's do, make them do it. I mean, just drop the hammer. Yeah, that would be go. awesome. There's so much involved in that whole thing. You know, Salah, great coach, but you know, if they fail, he could be a hot seat candidate. Obviously, Rogers coming into the fold. Brees Hall comes back from injury. Garrett Wilson's a stud. Mm-hmm. Their defense, like you said, guys like Sauce. I'm sort of repeating what you just said, but again, it's like that's the perfect – that's what Hard Knocks is supposed to be all about is the drama, the new things, new beginnings, turning a franchise around, like all those types mm-hmm. of stuff that you love to see in Hard Knocks. The Jets are all of it. So, yeah, they should put their foot down if they can. I don't think they're going to, obviously, but uh, that would be that would be my pick is the New York Jets. Yeah, and I think the NFL can and should as well because that would yeah. make for by far the best one. You have to have missed yeah. the playoffs last year, uh, and there's some yep. other caveats as to how, like what what qualifies for 
a hard yeah, like you candidate. can't have a new head coach or something mm -hmm. or like a new coordinator. There's like a bunch of weird rules, but it make, can't be like the old. Colts. Like they can't have the Cardinals or the Colts. Cardinals were also on the midseason hard knocks last year on. Right. I think that was on prime. Um, yeah. So uh, there's only four teams that qualify. Make the Jets do it. Come on. I want to see I Zach know. Wilson trying to make every day a nightmare for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Who yeah, right. him and him and Rogers apparently have a pretty good relationship. I remember even before Rogers ended up on the Jets, he was always a fan of Zach Wilson and you know tried to be a mentor for him. So even seeing that whole you know that room and that quarterback room dynamic unfold would be would be awesome. So if we can get that, I I haven't watched Hard Knocks in a couple of years, but if they do it this year, that's one I'm definitely watching. Uh, by the way, in the time that we were doing this podcast, Adam Pacman Jones, who is a known. Uh, ally if not close friend of deandre hopkins spoke on the pat mcafee show and the okay. takeaway quote for pat's nation was i don't think d hop leaves there i don't think he leaves without a deal mm. oh baby mm. Mm, 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 mm. you love to hear it now i would love to see it speaking of yeah, divas in the fun. nfl big sound yes. bites i wrote this up uh uh rather excuse me i did a pod on it earlier this week um I don't think it's getting covered quite enough. It's starting to pick up some traction. The noise is being made. There are rumblings out of Buffalo. What the hell is going on between Steph Diggs, Josh Allen, and the Buffalo Bills? Like, I'm sorry, where there's smoke, there's fire. And you last yeah. year, the 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 tailspin that team went into, begging to be beat by the Patriots, almost beat by the Dolphins, getting their lunch handed to them by the Bengals after the Bengals picked out all the good stuff just trouncing them at home in that division round game. Um, that, that lasting indelible image of, you know, Steph Diggs on the sideline arms raised, like what, what to Josh Allen, who was just sitting there looking so tired, broken and defeated. And to now have mini camp going on, Steph Diggs shows up, then leaves the building. And Sean McDermott is having to do the, Oh no, no, no. It's a, it's a well, I'm very concerned, but it's a totally yeah, no, fine. It's Everything's so fine. Odd. It's excuse. What is going on? Like he's already paid top five receiver money. He's getting $24 million a season. He can't be looking for more money. This isn't about money. Is it they want, does he want more looks? Does he want more of the offense run through him? Um, is there something he's unhappy about team wise, quarterback wise? Like since we know next to nothing and Buffalo is doing everything they can to clamp down on leaks. What do you think this is all about? It was, that was super odd again. His whole very concerned comment. At first, I went into my, uh, oh, he wants out of there. Uh, I did my whole Patriots meme with the Squidward pointing funny business, mm -hmm. you know, bring him here. But then I thought, like, okay, he was in the building the day before. He's paid top dollar and then doesn't show up. I was like, is he, is he okay? Like, when he says he's very concerned, like, is Deon is, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, is, is Stefan Stephon Diggs, I'm losing it, is Stefan <laughs> Diggs, like, around is he missing like what's wrong with Stefan Diggs and then it obviously came out that he came back and you know everything was fine but yeah an odd situation um I don't know if he's just sick of you know the the room sick of what's mm -hmm. going on in Buffalo clearly the stuff that happened but him and Josh Allen seem again to be on okay terms I think Diggs posted a picture of them together at uh at practice so um right. all seems to be well uh up in Orchard Park yeah. I don't know if that's going to continue well um but again, if you're getting paid, you're getting the ball and you make the playoffs every single year, that's just about all you can ask for. So mm -hmm. for him to, you know, ask out is kind of strange, but I think ultimately I think things are going to be fine. Yeah. I, I have played, I have planted you know, my flag in this ground. Things are going to be fine. I yeah. do not. I do not. I, as I say to heart and on the radio and wherever our voices will be found across the W E E I network and six rings. I, I don't mind being the lone resident of unpopular take Island. And go ahead. So you and think he's going to get traded? Then you think they'll? No, they'll have to I just trade think him? this is no. I think this is where the Buffalo okay. Bills season, the turnaround for their season begins. You marry okay. this, you marry this like peanut butter, peanut butter to bread, like uh, I, with the Madden thing going on. The fact that Josh is the Madden cover boy and the Bills are on there. The way last season ended, I thought last season was their chance to redeem themselves, come back yeah. and get theirs after the 13 seconds infamous defeat in Kansas City. They blew it. They had now they had too much on their shoulders. Obviously, they were emotionally exhausted. So some yeah. may say, no, this is the year they get after it. I don't know. I ain't buying it. I think there's been too many injuries, too many losses, too many expectations, too much pressure on them now. And I think that well, you've they heard could be my had. you've heard my AFC East hot take here on the Six Rings pod that uh the Jets are gonna win the AFC East, not the Buffalo Bills. So correct. 
look, if the Bills' demise is there, Jets can win the division. Heck, maybe even the Patriots, should they sign one DeAndre Hopkins, can get mm-hmm. themselves in the mix. So we'll see. But no, I, I'm with you on not being as high on the Bills, but I still think Diggs is going to probably be there and probably still be the the one of the better wide receivers in the division. So yeah, we'll see probably. I, maybe this is just me, my desire for the Bills to suck <laughs> again. Is, cl- is cloud exact, which is fine. At yeah. least I manage it. At least I'm honest about it. What does Hart always say? Absolutely. Well, the truth is never mean. I'm being honest. The truth is, yep. I want the Bills to suck again. So how about that? And lastly, uh, this news broke while we were podcasting. Old pal Antonio Brown, uh, part owner or majority owner of the uh, Arena Football League, uh, oh, wow, Albany okay. Empire. It has just been announced. The Albany Empire is not in compliance with the rules and regulations of the <laughs> Arena Football League. Of course, he it's has not. been. He has been kicked out. His team, not just him, his whole damn team has oh been God. kicked out of the Arena Football League. How do you like that? Uh, it's it's perfect. It, it, I wouldn't expect anything less from Antonio Brown to just be doing something stupid and getting himself screwed over and the people that he brings into his team and brings into his circle, screwing all of them over once again. He's done it so many oh. times over. If he was... You know, if I don't know if it's CTE, I don't know if it's mental health. I don't know what the problem is with Antonio Brown, but he was and probably still could be one of the best wide receivers on planet Earth. Absolutely. He was unbelievable. He was unbelievable as a football player, but he just can't keep it squared away. And it's kind of too bad to see. But yeah, I mean, again, the fact that, like you said, he goes off, he tries his next venture and gets his whole team uh kicked out of the league that is that is pure uh antonio brown for you it is a thousand percent pure uncut street grade (laughs) antonio brown yep it's a damn shame because yeah if he kept his as uh marshawn lynch would always say if he kept his mentals together then he would still probably be in the league and be a top earning top producing receiver but when you you know run off the field taking off your equipment at metlife stadium when your team's playing the jets do you know shirtless jumping jacks uh, it's just the, the le- everyone is better off until he either gets his stuff together, yep. gets his ish fixed. Since then he's had fights. Uh, he's been, he's exposed himself in pools in Dubai. There've yep. been uh, acts, you know, allegations of inappropriate, sexually inappropriate behavior. Like I can't imagine what anyone would want to do with this guy. Like he is hot, not hot as in like sexy, attractive or buzzing, like radioactive hot, like yes. stay as far away from, him as you can until further notice because it is just plain dangerous all right mike that'll do buddy we've wrapped up the pats pari we talked some d hop ran through your roster projections and more folks if you get a chance mike and i'll be back on the terrestrial airwaves the frequency modulation 93.7 fm weei and of course the weei sports radio network saturday of father's day weekend from 1 to 4 p.m give us a listen if you get a chance Please subscribe to the Six Rings Pod at Six Rings Pod. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. Give Mike a follow at Mike Cadlick. And of course, I'm at Fitzy GFY. For producer Justin Turpin and everyone at WEI, Odyssey and 2400 Sports. This is Nick Fitzy Stevens and Mike. We need we need some. Andy is Andy Jumbo Hart. We're gonna have to figure out a Mike, you know, something something, something yeah. Cadlick. Yeah. Mike uh, something Cadlick. <laughs> my and this is Mike something Cadlick for the there Six Rings of Football Things podcast. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening. As always, good day. God bless. Go Pats. Go Pats.